Let's look at an example of modular arithmetic. We're getting into the viewpoint where once we pick a mod, that's an entire universe, a finite universe of numbers with slightly different properties from our usual uh, arithmetic, but not very different. That's one of the key things. So I've um, picked Z12, um, the numbers mod 12 as the example, because it's a little bit different from the ones you're going to be doing as homework. And one of the most straightforward, kind of brute force, not super sophisticated ways of understanding uh, working in a mod is just looking explicitly at the addition and multiplication tables. So here they are. I did them in Excel here. So here's the addition table. And so we're adding one number to another, mod 12. Here's the multiplication table, multiplying one number by another. Addition is a bit simpler, and multiplication is a little bit more intricate, and then we'll go to exponents in the next chapter. Um, and so there's lots of patterns in, uh, <coughs> in the, the tables. One of the big ones that the book talks about is the symmetry. Like if I look at 10 plus 3, of course, it's the same. Um, as 3 plus 10, they both equal 1, because 13 is congruent to 1 mod 12. Um, here, there's also the symmetry that you have 10 times 5 is 50, or really, that's congruent to 2 mod 12, because you take out a 48. Well, that's the same as 5 times 10. So there's lots of patterns we could talk about, but I want to go ahead and jump into just explicit problems. Um, so I'm going to push this over. And I'm going to push this over. OK. So, and I'm going to write, this is anticipating a little bit of terminology from the second section of chapter 8. I'm going to write a bar over all the numbers. It may, might not show up incredibly well. Um, to emphasize that when I say 3 bar, I really mean 3 as a, an element of this finite set of numbers. Z12. Technically speaking, we're going to think of that as a congruence class. If you want to ignore the bars and just understand that every single calculation we do, we reduce mod 12, that gets you the, the idea, although not necessarily the spirit. Okay, so does 3 have an additive inverse in Z12? So that's about addition. What does it mean to have an additive inverse? We want to have some number such that x plus 3 is congruent to 0 mod 12. Now, I'm going to, again, take this new perspective. I'm going to think of these as new objects where I can really think of this congruent mod 12 as really equality on the nose. And so I'm just going to drop the whole congruent to and the mod 12. And I'm going to say, from now on, everything's mod 12. And I'm really thinking of these are the same, representing the same number mod, zero, mod 12. Okay, so is there something that works here? Well, you can do that by the table. I want to say that some mystery quantity that when I add to 3, I get 0. You bet. There's 0. Okay, it's not surprising. 9 plus 3. In ordinary integers, that would give you 12. But here, that's the same number. It's just a new name for the 0 in z mod 12. Okay, so this is kind of a weird looking equation here. Now, for just for this once, I'm not going to do this on, on all the stuff because it would take a long time. I'm going to put the bars on to emphasize that I'm not redefining a fact about integers. I'm really saying that in Z12, the number that acts like 0 can be obtained by the number that acts like 9 plus the number that acts like 3. And technically speaking, that would be like the congruence class of 9 plus the congruence class of 3 is the congruence class of 0. If you want to read all these equations simply as the ordinary integer 9 plus the ordinary integer 3 is congruent to 0 mod 12, that's fine. Um, but it, again, it's, you're missing out on the, the, the additional sophistication that we kind of want um, in this chapter. Okay, so 9 plus 3 is now 0. That's interesting. So indeed, 3 does have an additive inverse. So we could also say that minus 3, and I'm going to drop the bars here, is the same thing as 9. That's pretty funky, but that's the Z12 world. Okay. Notice the Z12, one of the reasons I picked this, is it's clock arithmetic. Um, and so this says if it's 9 o'clock in the morning and you add 3 hours, you get to 0. That's the start of PM. Um, and so this really does work. Um, equivalently, if you start at zero on the clock, let's say noon, and you go three hours back, it's 9 a.m. So these are actually familiar facts in disguise. Okay. Um, 
still on this video. I'll break it up into parts. I won't do all these parts in the same video. But uh, does any element of Z12 not have an additive inverse? Okay. Now, in ordinary integers, you can take any number and just negate it and get an additive inverse to that. Um, but what about Z12? It's not, it's not obvious. Okay. But take a look at this, this table. 0 plus 0 is 0. Okay. Is there something that 1 adds to? Well, let's say these guys. Is there something that 1 adds to to get 0? You bet. 1 plus 11. Oh, is there something that 2 adds to to get 0? Yep. Okay, so notice there's this chain of zeros here. I'm always able to find a 0 in every row. So no matter what number I pick, like 7, I yes, I can find something that adds to that to give me 0. Now, what it is, namely in ordinary integers, is just 12 minus 7. Okay, so from the table, every row and every column, because it's all symmetrical, has a zero. Okay, and that's sort of how the table is showing us that. Okay, algebraically, if I take any number x and add to it 12 minus x, well, that's going to give me 12, and that's in our world that's equal to zero. Okay, so it really everything does have an additive inverse. Now, multiplicative inverses are significantly more interesting, and it really kind of depends on the mod exactly how those work, and we'll see that. Okay, speaking of multiplication, okay, so let me go over, um, see, let me, I think there's one down here. Yeah, so here's the multiplication table. Okay, um, if the product of two numbers is equal to zero in Z mod 12, we'll just do one of these and then we'll switch to a new video. If the product of two numbers is equal to zero in Z mod 12, can we conclude that either A equals zero or B equals zero? Of course, in Z mod 12. Okay, so this is the zero product property. That's what we count on over and over and over and over again in algebra. Um, it's hugely important. And is that true here? Okay, well, let's look at the multiplication table. So let's see. Um, there's definitely zeros all along the edges of this, this diagram. So zero times anything is zero, of course. Anything times zero is zero, okay. But look at this. There's some other zeros here. There's a bunch of other zeros scattered throughout this picture, this table. So, for example, 4 times 3, that's equal to 0. Because in ordinary integers, 4 times 3 is 12, and we're counting that as 0. Or 8 times 6. Ordinary, that's, ordinarily, that's 48. Well, that's congruent to 0 mod 12. Okay. So, this is a really big deal. No, not here. Okay, so this is going to be an important question in general, and it's going to depend on exactly what kind of mod we're in. Super, super, super important question, whether this is true in a particular mod or not, the zero product property. And we've discovered that it's not true in Z12. You might want to think, I don't think I want to give it away, but you want to, might want to think, what is it about 12 that makes it possible for a non-zero number times a non-zero number to be imitating zero, to essentially be zero in C mod 12. Okay, the next parts will be in the next video.